Hi everyone, this is Lyndon from Professor Majinska's class on post-colonial studies. I'm here to talk about one of my favorite books, Americana, which was written by Chimamanda Adichie, who tells the story of uh, two people, one, Ifemalu, who's a Nigerian immigrant who moves from Nigeria to uh, the Tri-State area here in the United States, and also Ebinze, who moves from Nigeria to London, England. Both struggle to assimilate culturally as black immigrants moving to white-dominated cultures. And I think this was important to read because uh, both of them, the story is really parallel, I think, to post-colonial studies of, historically speaking, white people were always dominating society, whether it goes back to the slave trade from selling and auctioning slaves off and forcing them to work on their plantations, and also today, how, especially in the United States, whites pretty much control, structurally, they're pretty dominant um, in a whole variety of ways. So, very quickly, I want to pick out two passages that I think are pretty significant to the story as a whole. The first one is when Ifemalu is on, she's taking two trains from Princeton, New Jersey to Brooklyn, and she knows that people are obviously looking at her because not only is she black, but she's also a little bit overweight. So she knows that she's fat and she feels pretty self-conscious about it, and this is also right after she had moved to the United States in the first place, so she's actually a little bit uncomfortable um, assimilating into a white-dominated culture. So I'll read just a very brief part of it. Um, she talk, She's talking about her body, and she says she had thought of them as big because one of the first things her friend Janika told her was that fat in America was a bad word, heaving with moral judgment like, like stupid or bastard, and not a mere description like short or tall. So she had banished fat from her vocabulary but fat came back to her last winter after almost 13 years when a man in line behind her at the supermarket muttered fat people don't need to be eating that shit as she paid for her giant bag of Tostitos. So obviously I think within these few sentences that I just read a moment ago as as if Emily was being a, a fat black woman she's um being considered, you know, sort of inferior intellectually, she's dumb, and also that she's, I think, to infer is that she's almost a lazy person if she's, of course, purchasing a large bag of Tostitos, which is not healthy to begin with, and in my opinion, people shouldn't be eating with, and she's basically, as, as Adichie um, illustrates, she's already facing an enormous amount of discrimination as she, um, just right when she arrives to the United States and when she's traveling and, and reminiscing about her time in the supermarket. So that's one of the passages that's significant. And the other one, I'm just going to flip to the uh, the other page that it's on, is when um, Ifemalu is actually speaking to her, her aunt Uju um, back in Nigeria, so flashback. And Aunt Uju is sp- explaining that um, she has to basically adjust her physical appearance in order to get a, do- a job at the doctor's office. So my point is that Aunt Uju actually has braided hair, and she knows that she there, there's no way that she'll be able to get that job uh, at working at a doctor's office if she has braided hair, because as we all know, that wouldn't be um, culturally accepted in, in um, a, a, an industry that's pretty much dominated, as we already know, by white people. So... Um, I'm just going to very quickly read a short passage that discusses this. So Aunt Uju says, I have to take my braids out for my interviews and relax my hair. Kemi told me that I shouldn't wear braids to the interview. If you have braids, they will think you are unprofessional. So Ithmalu asks, so there are no doctors with braided hair in America? And she responds, I have told you what they told me. You are in a country that is not your own. You do what you have to do if you want to succeed. Now, this is actually one of my favorite passages in the entire book because it does a really good job of illustrating, I think, that um, Adichie's point is that if you don't, if you don't uh, portray yourself as, as how a white person would, which a white person, I don't know any white people who have braided hair, that that's not only is it unprofessional, but it's actually not beautiful and therefore it's not accepted um, in the United States that if you want to culturally assimilate, uh, having braided hair is just a non-starter to no-no. So I think that um, both of these passages that I just read to you folks just a moment ago illustrate that in order to assimilate culturally in the United States from 
Adichie's perspective, and I think she actually is pretty accurate, that how you look, whether it's being overweight or having what, you know, proper hair that's considered beautiful and appropriate is, um, I think, both key to um, succeeding in the United States. And it, the best way to assimilate culturally is to appear professional. So thank you all for your time, and I love you all.